this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove the rotary hook and the positioning finger from this Singer Model 401A. Now, this procedure would also work on the um, 403, should work on the 404, and the Rocketeer models 500A and 503. So this round part, of course, is the rotary hook. And right here is the hook point. And it goes through the bottom of the machine and has a shaft. Okay. It's where you connect the gear to. This part here is the positioning finger. And it can be removed from the hook. And it, it straddles the hook. And its main function, oh, sorry, it's held in place also by a short shaft or post that goes through the bottom of the machine, the bottom of the machine, and then is held in place by a set screw. The main function of the positioning finger is to position the bobbin case inside the hook and allow you to get it on this inside little shelf called the race. So you notice this uh, part right here and you see the notch up at the top of the case that hooks right in there like that and then you can slide the bobbin case onto the race. So positioning finger and the hook. Okay. The hook comes uh, and the and the positioning finger both come right out the top bed of the machine here. So there's some things you do for preparation. You will remove the needle if you have a needle in place in the machine. and you need to remove the presser foot and then the throat plate on these type of rocketeers you want to position turn the hand wheel and position the take up lever down here at the bottom right about there it seems strange to say that because really what you're doing is lowering the feed dog below the throat plate or needle plate and you can't always see the feed dog well so Singer puts it out like lower this to the bottom position because you can always see your take up lever okay once once you're in the uh, correct position there you just move your uh, throat plate position lever up and then all the way over to the left which is the unlock position and when you do that you're raising up the throat plate and you can slide it off the back like that then go ahead and move the position lever back to the right to lower the lifting pins here and then we'll need to take off our bed plate or slide plate or bobbin cover slide. And it also comes off the back by pushing it back. Like that. Okay. Now we want to take our a bobbin case out and to do that you lift the positioning spring bracket up and move it to the right so don't push on the little spring finger itself but behind there you'll see a piece of the bracket coming up and you can put a small screwdriver or your fingertip there lift the bracket up and push it 
to the right. Now that that uh, has slid off to the right there, we can move the base of the bobbin case a little to the right. See how it fell off the hook grace now? That moves it off of that positioning finger and we can lift the base of it up and take it out. So now we can see the hook And back under here is the positioning finger. So you can imagine to lift this out, we've got to take the case positioning bracket out and the feed dog. So to take this out, we're first going to push it back to the left like we would against the bobbin case. But then we're going to uh, lift it up and keep pushing left to slide out the arm from the tension spring. So we lift it up and come on stubborn. There we go. Move it to the left. So you can see now this arm that goes under the bed there. And under the bed back in there is the tension spring that holds it in place. So by moving it out of that tension spring, you can lift it out. Okay. Now, boy, it's kind of dirty in there, isn't it? See why they say to take off that throat plate and take your lint brush in there. <laughs> Trouble hasn't been cleaned up in a long time here, huh? <laughs> okay. Anyway, let me get the correct uh, sc screwdriver here and we'll take out the feed dog. This is one of the places I love to use by mini ratchet. Um, from Chapman Manufacturing Company because it can be a tight fit getting a screwdriver past the head or nose and down into these two screws. That's why you see a lot of damaged uh, screws. So if you have some kind of a little ratchet like this or an offset uh, screwdriver that's the best to try and use. These screws can be stuck and they can be firm. So, uh, and they're, the screws to me seem kind of soft. So, uh, get the best fitting screwdriver you can get in there. And if they don't want to come out, of course, you can use a uh, penetrating oil. And uh, you can also use um, like a hair dryer to heat them up a little bit. I'm showing you from the back side here because I can get a better, a little bit better view of in there. And I've got the presser bar up and you can see it's still a tight fit to get that in there. What I'm going to do with this ratchet is just get them uh, loose. But you can take them all the way out with this or you can get them to where you can get your fingertips on them and then take them out. If you drop a screw down in there, don't worry. You'll find it in the bottom of the machine or under the machine. Because once we get all this off of the top, we have to go... Uh, take out a couple of screws on the bottom side of the machine. One thing that I meant to mention in the beginning was if you take out the hook, you very well may need to re-time the needle point to the hook after you put it back in. So just be aware of that. And there can also be, uh, sometimes there can be another uh, adjustment you have to make.
but usually you would only be doing this hook removal if you had like a damaged hook point or um, maybe you wanted to do a super cleaning down in here if you have a lot of uh, old grease and stuff when uh, Terry recently communicated with me about taking out the hook and we had some emails back and forth I realized I don't think that I had ever done a video of taking the hook out on a slant needle machine so I uh, thought about that and that's why I said in the beginning that Terry kind of ins gave me the inspiration that I should do this video while I'm working on trouble here so there's the two little uh, screws that hold in the feed dog so we've got that out Got all my parts put away here in a nice little magnetic bowl in the hopes that I don't lose them. And now we can see some more of that um, hook and all the lint back here. <laughs> well, um, and the position finger. So we're ready to go to the underside here. So I'm going to uh, put a towel down behind the machine and lay the machine on its back and get set up to show you that. That looks pretty good here. This is the hook gear right there. And that uh, shaft end that you're seeing is this part right here. And you'll see that that uh, bevel gear mates with another bevel gear that's on the hook drive shaft that goes over here and you have another bevel gear set in here that is powered from the vertical shaft that goes up to the arm of the machine. So when you turn the hand wheel and, and the upper arm is rotating a gear there transfers power to this and the bevel gears make the hook drive shaft here rotate over to this gear set which will make the hook uh, gear rotate and make your hook turn okay now one thing I was hoping you could see in here, it's hard for me to tell through the camera, but um, see if maybe I can get another light over here. The, um, this, the set gear or set screw on the drive gear and the hook gear, they usually line up on the same line. So right there is the set screw on this gear, which we don't do anything with. But it lines up right over here with the set screw on the hook gear. And we'll have it that way after we put it back on. That's just something to give you an idea. Okay, let me elevate this up a little on a wood block. There's a there's a couple of things now to know about the set screw and the gear. Um, the set screw on the hook gear sits on a flat spot of the hook shaft and it must sit centered on that flat spot right there. You don't want it anywhere half on the edge or anywhere on the rounded part of that flat spot. Okay. And when the gear is on here, you can help tell where that flat spot is because it comes clear off the end of the shaft. 
So here's my flat spot and you see it comes clear off. So when you're looking, you have your gear put back on and, and you're turning the hook, you can see this flat spot right on the end and you want to line it up perfectly with that set screw. Okay, and I'll talk more about this when we go to put it back on. But that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing is that these gears are a factory meshed to just mate up perfectly. And I was told that the, the gears were cut and they were paired up on um, some machinery to you know mate up like this and mesh uh, maybe like 20 sets of gears and they were lowered into a trough of polishing compound and then the machinery was run to turn all the gears and they were polished with this metal polished together in pairs and then that meshing was marked so when the person assembling the machine knew to do that same mesh, line up the mark to mark, so that the gears would be meshed at the perfect spot. So if you take this gear off and then you put it back on, if you even move the mesh by one tooth left or right, your machine is going to run noisier and it's going to run rougher because besides the factory mesh now it has however many hours of running where those teeth have even meshed and polished to each other more so the way to avoid a problem is before you take the gear off that you mark the teeth of the two gears the drive gear and the hook gear so that you know where they go back together and the way Singer suggests that is that you take a single tooth on one gear where it goes between two teeth on the other gear and you mark that spot so later when we put this back on we're first going to put the mesh properly and then turn the hook so that the flat spot is under that set screw okay now there's a few ways to so some people just use a sharpie um, you know to mark this in the in the service manual it says to use a crayon or chalk okay um, so I'll show you what I do is I have a jar that's I don't know how old here but I bought it at the dollar store it's a nail polish I just get kind of like a bright colored nail polish and uh, I actually put a drop of or two of nail polish let me show you here on the where I did it there so you can hopefully you can see that kind of pink colored nail polish there and I brushed it down one tooth or of this gear on the left and into the two teeth of this gear and then I let it dry now I wipe this part of the gear with my degreaser cleaner in the hopes that the nail polish would stay on there good so whatever you mark it with I suggest that you um, you know clean the metal with something at least alcohol so if you use a sharpie or a piece of chalk or whatever you use that it's got a good chance of not rubbing off because you start messing and you forget about that and you might rub off your mark. Does, 
Does that sound like I'm saying that because I made that mistake one time? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Later in the video, I'll, I'll try and remember to tell you how to fix a missed meshed gear, if you ever encounter that. But uh, anyway, that's why I use the nail polish. Okay? So, what I want to do is remove this or at least loosen this set screw. Now set screws on these gears they can also cause some trouble. <laughs> the gears get hot when they operate and uh, the set screw may never have been removed so it might be in there quite well. <laughs> and it could be smothered in varnished oil and so forth. So you always want a well-fitting screwdriver, a hollow point, a hollow ground, sorry, screwdriver tip if you have one. And um, it's they're lefty-loosey, just like uh, most of the screws. The feed dog screws were lefty-loosey. But if you can't break this free, don't, don't strip the head of the screw off, of course, because you're in big trouble. So you can use your penetrating oil and just let it soak, sometimes minutes, sometimes hours. Uh, you can also use heat, and you can also um, get your screwdriver tip into the set screw. Notice that little notch out right there? <laughs> um, and then you can give it a whack or two, not too hard. And some people like to do that while they're turning. So if you get your screwdriver in, you're trying to turn left and it, it just doesn't want to budge, you can keep trying to turn it and give it a couple of sharp wraps as you're trying to turn it. And that may help you get it out. The key is usually patience, um, you know, uh, especially if you're at the point you need penetrating oil. You can put it, put it in the set screw. It's recessed, so you can fill up the hole with it and let it sit. Uh, warm it up, let it sit some more. Try it again hours later or the next day. Alright, now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave that screw in. The idea now is that this gear is going to pull right off the bottom of that hook shaft. But it can also be stuck to the shaft, the gear can. So, uh, some ways around that are to pry the gear off. Uh, if you don't think it's stuck too hard, you can try that first. You can also remove the set screw and turn it up like that. You've got a nice cup there to hold more penetrating oil that can now get clear down to the shaft area, hopefully, and spread around. Okay. Uh, I just have an old wood uh, stick and I can get it up in there sometimes and start uh, prying down. There we go. And just breaking it free. Don't force it. You don't want to bend the hook shaft, right? Unless you don't care, unless you got a broken hook point and you're replacing it. So here's the dirty old gear that came off. And there's the shaft. That can be stuck in there too, but usually not. If it's turning, you can usually move it up and down. But what's holding this hook in now is that positioning finger 
And for that, we've got to position here. We have to go in a hole that is in the casting of the plate here. And when we do that, you'll you'll see a couple of screws in there, set screws. Um, one, now you, you notice I still have this machine laid on its back, right? So one screw in here is towards the bottom now. If you were working with this flat on your bench, it would be the screw on the left. There's another screw up here that uh, you would see is right in line with the hook shaft. And that screw is what's holding in this hook bushing. And you don't want to mess with that screw. Because the bushing is uh, all set up for the right distance of the hook to the needle point. So with the machine on its back, the lower screw is what you want. If the machine was laying flat on the bench, you would look at it like the screw on the left. And it's much easier to get to this screw for the positioning finger than to get up here uh, for, the, for the bushing finger. So this one that's not aligned with the hook shaft is what we want. And again, it's the same old, you know, it's a recessed set screw that maybe has never been off. So we, we want to be careful taking it out. It can be uh, stubborn can be stuck so you're back to your penetrating oil heat you know some people would just put a little w, WD-40 or PB blaster or their favorite penetrating oil and spray it on the feed dog screws and the gear set screw and this set screw and just let it sit overnight so the next day when they're going to work on their machine uh, maybe everything will come off pretty good now let's see if I've got enough of that. Yeah, that little, I think I'm going to loosen that screw a little bit more. The uh, positioning finger doesn't rotate the stud for that. So it can really be stuck in there. You know, people putting oil in there over the years and Stuff gets varnished in there and stuck real good. So you can take this screw out and you can put some penetrating oil in the screw hole if you if you feel like your positioning finger is really stuck in there and won't won't come out at all. Okay. But let's take let's set this guy back up here. And let's look at this positioning finger and see if it, boy, it's really, ee, it's really uh, very well in there. Let me just real gently, nope, I can't get that in there. Hmm. Okay, so let's go back to the bottom of the machine. And now you've got kind of a side view of that set screw that I backed out. And you see that um, positioning finger post end right there. That's the end of the positioning finger post. Mm -hmm. And on this post there's no flat spot or anything it just sticks in all the way and then that screw is tightened for the positioning finger so we've got to get this 
positioning finger post headed up towards the top. If you have a little uh, nail punch, which I know I have somewhere, but uh, if you have a, I just have an old uh, screw that came in a one dollar set and that's handy today so I'm going to try and put that up against the bottom of the post and just tap on it. Now you see there? I know I'm moving everything because the hook post started to go up too. So I've just about got it pushed out I'd say. Let's go up here and take a look <clears throat> and see if that's enough to get everything out of here. Maybe I'll turn my hand wheel and raise up my needle bar. There it goes. See that? And let me let me stop here for a second because I was negligent earlier and I should have spoken about this. I'm sorry, I, I just realized it when I was looking at this. But um, bef before you uh, push this up from the bottom, before you move the positioning finger and stuff, uh, I want you to rotate the hook a little bit and get the, that hook point away from the uh, positioning uh, finger here. And uh, I also should have told you, which you may already know, the hook is very sharp. It's pointy. It should be, anyway. <laughs> and uh, so be careful when you, when you are handling the hook that you don't uh, poke yourself. And uh, get the hook point away from this so when you're working on it, the position finger won't rub on the hook point okay sorry sorry about that so uh, we've gotten everything loose and tapped out and free here so let's see if we can um, remove it all now out of the machine it should kind of lift right up uh, together where you're pulling the hook don't poke yourself on the hook point and you're pulling the position finger and you're working it up out of the hook shaft bushing like so. Do a little housekeeping here. <laughs> Boy, there's a there's a good cause, a uh, good case for cleaning your machine, huh? Okay. Now this this positioning finger can be removed from the um, hook. Where's my hook point over here by my thumb? Eee, come on, you. Snug little fit, isn't it? How'd you like to assemble these all day at the factory? Man. Whew. Okay. Doesn't look too bad in itself, does it? This is very dry. The shaft. Now, can you see that little opening right there? This is an oil port. When you put a drop or two of oil in there, it seeps out this uh, hole on the side of the shaft, and that is to lubricate the shaft bushing here. Oh, there's some more junk here. My, my, my. Hey, 
that's the shaft bushing and you don't want to mess with that but that's what that's uh, I wanted to point out that oil port and where it comes out here on the side of the shaft and here's a little look at that right, look at look at all that stuff caught up in there I wonder why this person gave the machine away. Oh, it doesn't so worth a darn anymore. <laughs> right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So if we were to put this back on, get my point over here away from it, I think it would go like that. Woo! See how, see how close I got to my hook there? Yeah, I'm going to clean these up real quick, but I'll show you how to, to put it back on then and how to set it down in there. I just want to clean up the area, and while I got this out, you don't get your hook out too often, or the positioning finger. So I want to just clean it up while I have it out here. Mm-hmm. So I'll be back. You can see I soaked a rag with the crud cutter there and I pulled it up through the hook bushing. And while I'm letting it soften up the old gunk in there for cleaning, I decided I would scrape off this smudge all over. I, I just took the, took the hook out to make this video, but I'm starting to feel pretty happy I did after seeing uh, the thread and, and lint and dirt under here. So I hope you'll come back for part number two of this and see the installation of the hook and finger and checking and uh, resetting the timing if necessary. See you there.